So uh, we came up with this idea in the late 1990s to have um, a laboratory that would ride on the back of a flatbed truck, which we would then drive on to a ferry, and ferries go regularly between Portland, Maine and Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Uh, we crossed the Gulf of Maine at its widest point, and uh, we could sample from that, basically turn that ferry into an oceanographic research vessel. The idea with uh, NATS, the Gulf of Maine North Atlantic Time Series, is that we run the same line over and over again. We have two fundamental goals of NATS. One is to calibrate and validate ocean color satellites. And the other goal uh, of NATS is to run a time series to look at how the Gulf of Maine is changing. And every station that we take, which in these stations are separated by about anywhere from 25 to 30 miles going across, will have some aspect of the biological, bio-optical, chemical, and physical oceanography of the Gulf of Maine. We're probably measuring somewhere, between, somewhere around almost 300 different variables continuously as we cross. One of the things that we measure is primary productivity. How fast are the phytoplankton growing? We've noticed in about the year 2006 that the primary productivity was dropping significantly. We've used ocean color data from uh, Henry Bigelow back in 1912. 1913 when he was plying these waters he actually made ocean color measurements and we were able to use his data along with our data to show that the Gulf of Maine has yellowed. Uh, we then set about to try to understand what was causing these changes and, and our hypothesis is that we have more extremes of weather. It is more floods and more droughts and that's washing material into the Gulf of Maine and that material is, has color to it, it's like tea and that material absorbs light in the same wavelengths that phytoplankton need it to, to grow, to photosynthesize. I think the most fulfilling part of this has been watching this, this time series of a very complex environment increase to now a century of change, looking at a century of change in the Gulf of Maine. And uh, it's just really fulfilling to now be able to, to talk about what's happened in the Gulf over this time frame.